What's up guys, Rand Razor here with another tech video for you guys today, and today I just want to bring you guys a little quick comparison between two popular 15-inch models, and that is the Anticler MacBook Pro versus the Retina MacBook Pro. One thing I do want to mention that in terms of specs of the memory, the RAM, the processor, you can actually get either computer in the same configuration, such as 16 gigabytes of RAM, the highest processor available being a 2.8 gigahertz i7, or even SSDs in both uh, MacBook. The first major comparison I want to do, of course, is the display. It's obvious that in most aspects, the Retina screen wins hands down. With a 2880 by 1800 pixel resolution versus the high res Antegler, with a 1680 by 1050, the clarity and detail produced by the Retina screen, of course, is unmatched. However, that doesn't mean the Antecler is a bad screen. It has a higher resolution than the standard MacBook screen for a 15 inch, as well as the MacBook Airs. Color reproduced by the retina screen is definitely more vivid, in other words, more colorful, and of course they do pop a little bit more. Although it's a little bit hard to tell in the video and definitely seems like the opposite of what I'm about to say, I do find the white on the retina screen a little bit more, seems a little bit more an actual like white color. The white on the uh, antagonist screen, although looks white uh, from just looking straight at the screen here, it does have a bit of a kind of a tint to it, while the retina screen here produces a white that seems like a more actual, you know, white color to it. I know it's a little bit hard to describe, but from my eyes, I do prefer the white on the retina screens that seems a little bit more subtle and also just seems more like a solid white color. Comparing the text on the anti-glare high-res screen versus the text on the retina screen, as I mentioned earlier, because of the higher pixel resolution, or pixel density, sorry, is that text seems a lot more smoother and a little bit less pixelated compared to the anti screen on the left here. So what does the anti glare have against the retina? Well, the biggest and most obvious uh, convenience of having an anti glare screen is a reduced glare. And that's where the one feature of this particular screen shines against the retina MacBook Pro here. The anti glare MacBook Pro is most ideal in many environments, whether it's the sun shining from an atrium glass roof to the lights in your bedroom, it's hands down works with glare, no issues at all. The retina screen, all bet designed to reduce glare with this particular upgraded model compared to the standard glossy MacBook Pros, it's still there, but not as bad as the previous MacBook screen Screens. However, you still get a bit of glare to it because it's a glass screen. So I mean, here's a little quick comparison. I turned on the brightness of both screens just to give you a more kind of idealized environment of where glare may be an issue because the lights in the room are not as bright as the screens. Uh, turning down the brightness kind of gives it that effect where, you know, if you have the sun or something behind you, that may induce glare. So I mean, here's a little quick comparison. You guys can see both my hands here. The reflection on the glass screen is pretty obvious. However, the anti glare, although you can kind of see something, it's not as prominent and not as, you know, I guess annoying as it would be on a glass screen such as the Retina MacBook Pro. One last thing I do want to throw at you guys with one advantage with the Antigler MacBook Pro is that for those of you who are unaware, the Retina screen is actually not as bright as your standard uh, glossy or Antigler screen on the standard MacBook Pros. So for those of you who like bright screens, I guess, the uh, standard MacBook Pros do produce a lot more brighter screen than the Retina MacBook Pro. For those who want numbers, I read it's about 25% less than the standard MacBook Pro. Next thing I want to compare, of course, is the unibody design on both computers. The Retina MacBook Pro features a 25% reduction in thickness and around one pound lighter than the standard MacBook Pro. The obvious pros with a thinner and lighter computer that it's a lighter computer and thus less strain on your back when you're carrying it around. The standard MacBook Pro, I'll bet, is a bit thicker, however, still retains its unique features that the Retina MacBook Pro does not have, such as a built-in CD and DVD drive, an IR receiver to work with Apple's remote, a sleep and awake LED light to indicate that even though your laptop's closed, you can still identify the computer as sleeping and not running when you throw it in your backpack. A Kensington lock port for added security. And finally, an Ethernet port as well as a Firewire 800 port. One of the biggest highlighted features with the standard MacBook Pro versus the Retina MacBook Pro is that the standard MacBook Pro can be easily upgraded. You can buy the cheapest spec MacBook Pro and upgrade third-party RAM and hard drive to an SSD uh, for a lot more cheaper than actually doing it directly off of Apple's website. Thus, you save a lot more money, and plus your computer's a lifetime will be extended because you have the ability to upgrade the parts to it if something fails or if it's just out of date. With the Retina MacBook Pro here, as you all know, the Retina MacBook Pro is non-upgradable, so whatever you pick at the start whether it's a base model or customizing it, that's what would be stuck with for the lifetime of the MacBook. However, you can actually upgrade the SSD in the Retina MacBook Pro. The only thing that holds it down is a, a screw. However, it uses specialized uh, SSD memory that's offered only by one company at the moment. For example, a 480 gigabyte SSD for the Retina costs over $500, and it's a lot more cheaper to buy the memory directly from Apple when you build it than buying it separately later on. So thus, it's not really ideal, and therefore, upgradably, definitely 
wins hands down for the anti-glare with standard MacBook Pro. In terms of the battery life, from my experience, the Retina MacBook Pro wins it hands down, even though it's a thinner computer. From my school uses, mainly with studying, I find that I achieve the 7 hour advertised mark and sometimes even longer compared to the anti-glare, which I generally achieve 5 to 6 hours at best. The last comparison I did want to make, which is a little bit unusual, is actually the keyboard. The keys on the Retina MacBook Pro are slightly more recessed into the body than the anti-glare screen on the left side here. Although it's a little bit hard to tell in the video, there's actually a pretty significant difference in terms of how recessed the keys are in, in, in the Retina MacBook Pro. In terms of which computer is better, it's obvious that the latest and greatest has the best features. However, that doesn't mean there isn't a place for the standard MacBook Pro. The anti-glare screen is ideal for travelers thanks to its glare reducing properties and the convenience for whenever you need optical storage is always nice to have. In addition, all the ports on the 2012 current MacBook Pros do offer USB 3.0 as well. For me, the Retina screen is unbeatable. I love the clarity, vividness, and details it produces with the new MacBook Pro which is the most notable feature that it has to offer. This video isn't designed to tell you which computer to get, but to give you the comparison of both computers. You can get them in the same specs, but it really depends on whether you value and how much you want to spend on either computer is up to what you need and what you want. For me, as much as I love the anti-glare screen, especially as a student who goes to many different lighting environments from atriums to lecture halls, the Retina MacBook Pro has been the most pleasurable computer to use with its gorgeous display and the pound shed off really does make a difference in your backpack. Anyways, thanks for watching guys, hope this helps you out for those of you who want to purchase these awesome Macs, and of course I'll see you all next video. Peace!